What is up guys, Joe Holland here. This is all of the new stuff I have to put into play for the 2023 ice fishing season. And it's a crazy amount of stuff, but I'm so excited to show it to you guys and then use it all year long. I shot a video like this last season and I think I'm gonna shoot a recap of it and tell you how all the gear held up, what stuff was good, what stuff were done. So stay tuned if you guys wanna see a video like that. Leave a comment letting me know you wanna watch that video and I'll make that video on last year's stuff too. This stuff is all new, so I can't tell you how it works other than a few things that I've put in play in the last couple weeks. Here we go, let's go through it. All right, let's start with the boring stuff, get that out of the way right away. I picked up a handful of new videoing equipment to help out for this season, because it's super important. And I picked up three of these power banks. I'll throw a link to everything here in the description, I guess, if you guys are interested in it. These ones my buddy Alex Tim uses. He threw me a link to these, I clicked on it and bought three of them. So that way I can keep my GoPros going, regardless of the small battery capacity that they come with. I also picked up a Movo external mic that should be good in the wind. It should be good in most cases on a couple of my GoPros that don't have the media kits attached to them. And while we're talking about GoPros, I picked up two new GoPros. Both are the Hero 11 Blacks. This one is the Mini. That one's a little tiny one. It's kind of reminds me of the old Session that they used to have that I used to put underwater and it might be a really good one to wear on my hat while I'm out there fishing. So that's the Mini. That's the Hero 11 Black. These are their newest ones. I hope they're I hope they're better than the last ones, but you never know. It's probably just a little bit different. New cameras, always important to have different camera angles and multiple cameras so you guys get to see like a flag or a snowmobile or a sunset or sunrise or whatever. You just can't have enough cameras these days. One more thing that might bore you, but that's really important are socks. Like I, you're gonna laugh at this because I'm not the type of guy to wear like $20, $30 socks. My good friend Skip Bates, who was a retired game warden that lives in Alaska, sent me a pair of these and I absolutely love them. And these are made by Darn Tough. They're like, I think 25, 30 bucks. These are the Merino wool hunt ones and they come with a lifetime guarantee. So you wear them out, they'll send you a new pair. But the ones I've been wearing have been holding up. They're super good about wicking moisture away from your feet and they keep your feet warm on a super cold day. So they're pretty important, something you could easily overlook, but that's some new equipment that I have this year that's gonna make my year better. Oh my God, there's so much stuff. It can be almost overwhelming, but let's go next into the heat sources. I have two new heat sources this year. One of them was actually sent to me by a subscriber. I'm kind of pumped up to try this. Here it is right here. This is a diesel heat heater. We hear a lot about these and a lot of my viewers were concerned about the body heater and putting propane out there and the, the wet frost that I get inside the tent during these camping trips. So that looks like the answer to that. So this is a portable little diesel heater. Gonna need a battery or something to run it, which I actually have behind me. And you run the venting in and out for exhaust and intake so pretty pretty happy to have that thank you keith next along those lines something you guys have been after me for years to get finally have it is the winter well nomad large camp cooking wood stove we are going to be cooking with wood this winter. Some of you guys know that Donnie's gonna be going with me on a bunch of trips this year. I got a bigger shack, which you'll see in a minute. And in that shack, I'm gonna try to heat it exclusively with either the diesel heater or with the wood stove. So we're gonna cut a hole right in a brand new shack to get a stove pipe through. And we're gonna run wood heat in that one for the winter on these camping trips. Really cool setup on that thing. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. As you can see, it's still in the box. So I'm not gonna tell you how great it is now or give you any kind of review. I hate when people give reviews when they've never even tried something or opened it out of the box. So the cool thing about my channel is you'll get an honest review of it in due time once I put it through the test, because I will put it through the test. But everybody swears by these things. It's definitely a quality company and I'm excited to put it into play. It's stainless steel, it's pretty lightweight and everything fits in that little box right there is all you need. And along with those heating sources from Winterwell, I also have that's a grate for a large size flat fire pit. And the other cool thing is this is actually the fire pit. So a lot of people have been telling me that it's illegal to have fires on the ice if it's actually touching the ice. So this right here should keep a campfire up off the ice and it'd be a lot cleaner and it'll be pretty cool to have a fire. So there's the fire pit, folds out into the fire pit and then I have a grate that goes on top of it if we wanna cook on top of it. All right, another new product I picked up while I was out in Minnesota, just out of necessity, was a little... <laughs> Gonna need a few new rods. All right. 
was a little otter sled. This thing is, what is, I don't even know what model this is. Let me find out for you. This is the Otter Sport, and it's probably called the Junior. But it's the Otter Sport. It's a tiny little sled, it's not bad. It comes up to like, oh, a little bit over waist high. And it's good for day trips, for when you're not bringing a lot of gear, and from when you're walking or hiking, and it fits in the back of a car easily. And if you're sleeping in your truck like I was on that trip, it fits really nicely across the back. So Otter, you can't really go wrong with their sleds. That little, that little one right there is proven already for me. Even though I have several chairs, and I picked up a few new chairs for this year, I end up doing a lot of kneeling when I'm pan fishing, jumping around, using the live scope, and hole hopping. It keeps your knees dry and a lot more comfortable, so I picked up this foam pad from Home Depot or Lowe's. It's just a Husky foam pad, it's under $10. Get into the new jig rods for this year. So far, my absolute favorite one that I've been using and smashing giant crappie on is made by Lake Effect. This one's called a Panty Popper. It's 31 inches, the action is ultra light, but it's got a super fast action and it does have some backbone. So I've been catching 16 inch crappie on down to 14s. I've probably put a hundred or more on the ice already with this rod and it's by far my favorite. On that rod, I've been running clams like upper to mid range inline reel, which I'm starting to not be a fan of inline reels, but the clam one hasn't let me down yet. And this one's the gravity. So that one's been pretty good. It's got a decent, decent drag for what it is and it's super smooth and i haven't had a lot of problems with it so that's like my favorite setup right there for panfish right now next two rods that i've been digging i picked these up when i was in minnesota at the saint paul ice show these are made in elk river minnesota by della bay i believe it doesn't actually say on it who made them so you guys might want to put your name brand on them but one of them's the parento pup it's a light rod, it's probably 28. And then the other one is 15 for two, and that's a medium light. And you see me catching some big crappy on those this year if you've been watching the channel. Disregard the reels. Um, actually, that Sienna is new. There's a Sienna 1000 Shimano on there that I like a lot. The inline, or inline 13 Fish and Black Betty, I do not like. I'll tell you guys more about that on the next video. But these two rods have been awesome for crappy too. Really good feel to them, good bend to them as well. Next series of rods, uh, I've been using these for a couple years. I just decided to try out a bunch of different sizes and weights in them are the are made by, I believe they're actually made by Clam. Let me look on the bottom of them. Yep, they're made by Clam and they, they range from Dave Gens to, I've done really well on these for lake trout. I like the 36 medium heavy and the 40 heavy on deep lake trout or even just mid-range lakers. So this year I picked out some new ones to try. That's the 30 inch medium. That one feels pretty good. That's a split grip. It feels like it's pretty stiff at the end. This one is a beast. It's a 45 extra heavy. So that one's gonna be for those super deep lake trout that I'm fishing almost 200 feet deep on Sebago. Another 36 medium heavy split handle. So that'll be just a great all around range for whether I'm burbot fishing, cusk fishing, lake trout fishing, bass fishing, anything bigger than pan fish. And then there's a 32 medium heavy, which I was expecting to be a little lighter than it is, but the shorter you make a rod, usually the stiffer they are. So that should be a good one for bass or in tight spaces. Uh, picked up another 36 medium heavy. That one's just an all around great weapon for so many different species and so many different, different locations. And then the 34 heavy is another great one for inside. I've been super happy with that series of rods. They don't cost a lot of money. They average like 35 to $40 each, or I guess maybe as high as $45. And I haven't had any problems with them and they've, they've held up for me. So I'll keep using them and trying the different models and letting you know how they work. But I know for sure the 40 heavy and the 36 medium heavy are definite workhorses and great ice fishing rods. That is the 13 fishing, the Snitch SN 225. So it's probably 25 inch. It's uh, pretty light. It's got one of those tips on it that is super light. So you, you feel all the hits and the bend is two or three guides down. So kind of small. If I'm fishing like finicky bluegill or something like that, maybe I'll use it. But I'm a big fan of using like a fast, little bit stronger rod for a crappy so I can get that quick hook set on them because before they hit and spit. While we're on rods, 
I did pick up a couple new reels. I got a Lose Laser SG Speed Spin. It's like a 1000 series, so it's a little bit smaller than your normal open water reels, but I'm hoping it's pretty decent. I've had really good luck with Lose, and they used to sponsor me when I fished the tour, so I've always been loyal back to them. And then here's a little Crossfire LT1000 Daiwa, so we'll give that a try too. So I'm kind of moving away from the inline reels. I just had such a bunch of nightmares with them, other than that clam gravity, which has been treating me pretty well. The other ones I've not been impressed with. So I'm going back to spinning reels and I'm looking into 1000s and 2000s and those. I don't really have too much of a need for a 3000 series reel. And then when we're on rods and reels, next one is I picked up a couple of these Eskimo rod holders that I'm pumped about. This is like, once you start investing that kind of money in rods and reels, you gotta protect them. So I'm pretty excited to put these into work and separate rods and reels and keep them in good shape because it's hard to keep them in good shape when you're jumping in and out of snowmobiles and bouncing all around. The Eskimo 42 inch rod locker is gonna be nice for me. I'm gonna, you know, the, the, the one downside is you can only put four, maybe a little bit more rods and reels in there. But when I'm fishing crappy, that's all I use is about three. When I'm up north fishing Lakers, I'm fishing for. So I, I got two of these things, two rod lockers, and I'll show you how they work. A pretty cool top on it for plenty of gear, tackle, lunch, um, whatever you need for jigging. And then it has, it has this vented areas, three different ones separated to put stuff into. And then each end has one of these flaps right here with rod tubes where you could slide your rod in there like that and you could slide it in either one and still leave your reels attached which is going to be really nice so that's pretty awesome there and you could go in from either end on those should keep it protected on those snowmobile rides and in the back of the trailer and throwing stuff around all right this one i'm like crazy excited about i never thought i would go back to a regular auger after using the milwaukee and the lower from ions g2 before i got the new ion which you'll see in a second i picked up a new milwaukee drill as you can see i got a woodworking shop here so i'm always using drills and tools anyway but this is the 2904 and it's got like an anti catch and kick which i never really had a problem with but i've heard of people breaking fingers and wrists due to these things catching so i picked up the 2904 it's supposed to be a little faster it's supposed to be a little bit safer i've used it a bunch this year and haven't had any problems with it at all it's been awesome so another milwaukee even if i don't use it on the ice i'm still golden to use that in the wood shop the big one is the new ion the alpha by ion i got the 10 inch here I I was able to use this in Minnesota and I could not believe how good this thing was cutting, how fast and easy and effortless this new ion cuts. It has to do, a lot of it has to do with the blades. The blades have two different directions sharpened on them. So those are the turbo blades. And as you can see, it's sharpened in the regular area. And then on the inside where they usually get doled up and they're not sharpened, these are actually sharpened. So I think that has a big key to it. Got an extra set of blades because you can never have too many of those. And the auger itself is right here in this box. Like I said, I got to use it. My friends, when I was in Minnesota, and was just blown away by it. So I'm going back to a regular auger. This one comes with two batteries, two of the four amp. And a lot of guys get nervous on the batteries only being a four amp because with everything you want to go higher amp hours on those. But the auger just cuts so effortlessly that a one four amp hour battery will cut hundreds of holes. I don't know if you guys had a chance to see Jay Siemens video on that. It was another one where it's just like, it's crazy how good that auger is. And he proves it in that video. I'm really excited to use that this year. I got two batteries that come with it. I picked up another battery just to have because I go on these long trips right there. And then with that battery, I picked up something that's really cool is a power adapter. So you could charge your cell phone, you could charge your GoPro batteries, and you could pull any 12 volt out of that actual four amp hour battery as two USB port. Kind of a really cool thing to add to, to those if you're gonna be carrying you know several of those ion batteries. That is a 40 volt ice auger. So it cuts 1200 inches per charge on those four amp hour batteries. So if you're in six inches of ice, you're gonna cut 200 holes on one four amp hour battery, which is pretty amazing. It cuts like two and a half inches per second which is just mind blowing until you try one. So I'm excited to get that out there and put it to the test and, and put it up against some other augers. I ended up just giving my Strike Master 40V away to a friend once I tried this one because I was like, well, there's no point in running that anymore if, if there's something that much better on the market. So that's why I picked up the Ion. A battery case 
to hold your spare battery. So that'll hold a couple of spare batteries in there and keeps them warm, I guess. Keeps them from getting damaged. This is something pretty cool I picked up at the show. This hooks onto your big buddy heater and you could cook off it or put your uh, heat fan on it or if you need to dry something out, it, it sits and sits away from your buddy heater perpendicularly. Stainless steel all welded up. This was made by the original guys that invented that. Gotta have winter hats. I ended up picking up like two or three of these. So I end up sleeping in these even though I don't wear them a lot while I'm ice fishing. They're nice to sleep in. Keep my head warm. All right, this is something that a bunch of viewers have been after me to get. Something along the lines like you've heard of a Jackery. This one's made by Bouge RV. You could hook up multiple power appliances to this thing. It's like a generator that you don't have to start. So it's kind of like a giant battery pack or it is a portable power station. Has the hookups, 1100 watt hour, high capacity, 1200 watt output, which is crazy. So if I want to bring a, a coffee machine, I could actually bring one and brew coffee on the ice. It's got the smart display the LED and the cool thing about this one is it's got a fast AC and solar charge 200 watt solar charge so I picked up a solar panel for it too when I'm out fishing if it's not too cold I should be able to leave the solar panel hooked up plugged in and charge this up so whatever I use at night or during day I should be able to recharge it just from the sun off these solar panels so I'm pretty pumped to try that out on camping trips like I said if it's too cold on some of these ice fishing trips it'll still be viable and usable on my summer fall and spring trips too but I'm pumped up to have that for charging batteries that's like one of my biggest things to worry about on these long trips are like when my GoPro batteries run out or need to be recharged and with augers being electric now with auger batteries so I should be able to charge everything from this run everything from this and if I ha ever get into an emergency situation I could plug in something that I need to get out of that situation a couple chairs from Eskimo these are the triangle chairs I tried these out at my buddy Sean's shop in Monmouth at Jack Traps and I liked them they felt pretty rugged they're they're not super light that's one thing I liked about them I used to have a hard time with the ones that are plastic these feel like they're metal they feel pretty rugged and they fold up really small which is nice to throw on a sled but they're pretty comfortable they they uh I'm, I'm in one now and I'm kind of rocking back and forth in it moving around and it's super stable it's comfortable I don't know how it's going to be super long days I'll give you guys that report once I put them through super long days but just in the store and in the shop here it's Pretty awesome. So I got two of those. Donnie's gonna be going on a bunch of the trips with me and it'll be nice for inside the hut to have a chair that folds up. I mean, you do a lot of sitting inside when you're camping too, even if you're not fishing in your hut. And it's nice that they fold up so you can move around while you're cooking or while you're getting ready to go fishing. So that's one thing I like about these is how small they get when you're not using them. Moving on to the electronics. This is something that I ended up picking up last year, but you didn't get a chance to see it much because I made a user error and broke my screen on it. But this is the LX9 Markham. I bought it. I don't really care about the sonar on it because I have the live scope by Garmin, but I bought it for the camera because my buddies have it. And I was pretty impressed by the camera down in like 70 foot of water on West Grands. You're gonna see the LX9 to get you guys some better underwater footage. I have the Markham LX9. Pretty pumped about that thing. I'm gonna try to not break the screen this year so that way you guys get a chance to see it in use. But that's a pretty cool unit and you also can use the sonar on it too, along with the camera. That's the unit right there with the screen cover. Uh, I'd advise putting that screen cover on when you're snowmobiling 10 miles in and it's bumpy. I did not have it on right there. But now that I have that on there and I ended up uh, sending this to Markham. They have great customer service. I talked to the guys on the phone and they're really awesome guys. They fixed that for me. They fixed something else I think I broke too. So they're really good guys. I'm excited to, to put that to use this year to get you guys that underwater footage that you guys have come to expect and love as much as I do. Here's a just incredible thing right here. I ended up getting two of these. This is the LVS 34 transducer by Garmin, the 34 plus. It is about as good as they get. I'm gonna actually open this one for the first time. The other one is on the unit already. Yep, there she is. I've been running the LVS 32 for the past two years. You guys seen that in a lot of my videos and it's just an amazing unit. So when I heard that Garmin was coming out with a new one, you, you know it's gonna be better like with Garmin. So if they coming out with something, it's like no question like, eh, is it worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. If it's Garmin and they come out with something new, it's definitely worth it. There it is right there. That's the LVS 34. And they say it sees like 30 to 40% further, clearer and better 
resolution. No, you do not need two of these, but it sure is fun if you got another person and if you want to stay on fish at all times. Have one guy put it in forward view and he directs the other guy where to go, how far to go, and then that guy runs over with his live scope and hits them. And if the fish move, he can kind of tell you where they went from there than the other guy. So with two live scopes, fish really can't hide at all if you can locate them at all. For Garmin units this year, like I said, I'm gonna run that 93 SV. I've been running, I'm gonna try to rig up one of those new transducers on it. But for my regular uh, LVS 34 setup, I'm gonna be running the GPS map 1022. Um, awesome resolution on this thing. And it's a 10 inch screen, so it's gonna be pretty great. I'm super excited to be using this. I've had it out uh, for about a week now. With my Garmin electronics, I'm gonna be running the Summit Fish in Bags and Poles. The poles are just a really, really well designed pole. You could pop your transducer off and tuck it into your bag right off the pole with no problem for transport and for protecting your transducers. So the bags are awesome. They're super rugged and they're set up really well for to hold a, a nice lithium battery. It's got a glow light for if you're fishing glow lures and you just hold your lure in front of that for a second. And it's easy to charge. You charge it right here through the port. So you're not hooking up or unhooking anything. And the bag itself is just awesome and it's got a lot of storage on it. Really well built. And one of the cool things on the new one is it actually has a holder for your pole, for your, uh, your pole right there. So the pole just kind of clips into the back of that for when you're moving around or when you're transporting if you want to just leave it like I do for running and gunning. This is a smaller bag for the 9 inch. That's the one I'm running for my LVS32 with a 9 inch with a 93 SV for my second one that I'm going to switch over to the 34. So both of those I run amped lithium batteries in them. I picked up the 48 this year for the 1022 and the LVS34 and last year I ran the amped lithium 32 amp hour in the with the 93 SV and the 32 live scope which worked incredible I used it for several days at a time when I was on those camping trips without having to charge it so super 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 happy with amped lithium batteries uh, have never let me down they, they've been really good in there they put a bunch of juice out to run these live scope units so summit bags summit poles amped lithium and Garmin and it's pretty much the best electronics in the world, in my opinion. And that's the best setup you can get right there. Next up, I did some improvements on my snowmobile, which you may have seen in my earlier snowmobile video at my dealership chase. But one thing I picked up while I was there is a lot better helmet. So I'm pretty excited to have this. It should have a heated shield on it because I think that's all I really cared about. Where is it? And it comes with a hookup for the heated shield. There's nothing worse than when you can't see when you're snowmobiling because your, your shield's fogging up. So I'm pretty excited to have that. I, I don't really care about having a heated helmet, but having a heated shield is gonna be awesome for when it's super cold out and you're going from cold to hot. The other cool thing on this helmet too, one of the reasons I got it and I liked it, is you could flip the whole, the whole face shield up like that if you want to talk or talk to the camera or you're going into somewhere or something you don't want to take your helmet off so it's cool to have that and it'll be easier getting it on and off too over this frosty beard once it starts freezing up one of those cool gadget things that i'm pretty pumped up to use this year are these blue tips um, with a max transmitter um, these things are actually rigged this year for jack traps with these little tiny clips here in the rubber band and they will tell you on your phone when you have a flag, they'll give you a warning and a buzzer goes off on your phone and lets you know when you have a flag up. So if you're if you're like me and you got a live scope going and you're paying attention to your live scope, the world could be falling apart around you without you knowing it because you're so focused in on catching those fish on your screen. The cool thing is this will send a beep and then it'll let me know I have a flag up. So that's gonna be super cool. It's gonna be awesome cusk fishing at night when I'm in there cooking or eating or reading to just hear that beep go off and not have to drive around and actually visually see all my traps, which you might want to do anyway, legally, just to make sure. I've tried them out in the store on the jack traps and they work, so I'm really excited to put those to use this year. I got five of those and the, and the long range transmitter. These are made by Deep Freeze out of, I think they're out of Minnesota too. All right, there's the other part of the Garmin Live Scope kit that I have. That's the other 34. That's the deal right there, guys. It's like, it's worth every penny if you ask me. I get asked a lot, you know, and I know it's a huge thing to buy, but if you're a content creator or if you're out there a lot or if you have the money, 
I mean, it just, it changes the game. It just makes fishing so much more fun, as you could see on my channel. And then one other piece of electronics that I picked up this year is an ice, another ice kit. This is for the, the Garmin 5 UHD, which stands for Ultra High Definition. And this is just a whole, complete whole hopping rig. When I'm bouncing around with my live scope, I could just grab this thing. It weighs a couple pounds and drop in a transducer really quick and hop from hole to hole. And if I'm, if one of us, if I'm in a group and one of us is like guiding people onto the fish where they are, this will be a perfect unit to just leave on and run to that spot, drill a hole, drop that down and you're good to go. So nice little hole hopping option there. And for when I'm bringing other people out and it'll be fun to jig with that too. So can't have too many of those. All right, another cool thing I picked up for safety along the lines on the snowmobiling is this Arctic Anchor. A lot of people told me I need to get one of these and I met the guy that makes them at the show and it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a great idea. You could make one yourself, but this one folds up and it's gonna fit in the back of my snowmobile really well. So if you get buried in the slush or break down or something goes wrong and you're on the ice, you drill a hole, you drop that piece of metal down it and you yank on one side of the string and it tees it. So you're anchored to the ice and then you can pull ahead that way. So that's another really cool thing I'm excited to have. And hopefully I do not use this at all. And hopefully I never take it out of the package. All right, another another big purchase is, I, I've never had a problem with my sleeping bag, although it is like 25 to 30 years old now. And I've slept in some serious cold with it, but it is cloth. And when I roll over a lot at night, it does kind of twist me around like a sausage and tightens up on me. So I wanted to try one of those kind of slicker, um, like smooth, silky kind of sleeping bags. And this was the one I found. It had a bunch of like good reviews. It had a bunch of bad reviews. So I'm going to have to give you my own review on it after I try it. But this is Browning's McKinley. It says it's good to 30 below zero. Um, pretty much all the reviews said no, it's not good at anything below zero. It's 36 by 90 inches. It weighs almost 13 pounds. And it's got the ripstop outer, which is going to be slick and smooth. The inner doesn't look like it's going to be too grabby. So I'm pretty excited to have this thing. I got a couple people going on trips with me this year that don't have good equipment. So I'll just use my regular sleeping bag and let them use this or I'll use this once I get going on a lot of these solo trips. So new sleeping bag for the winter ice camping. I'll let you know how it goes. Since Donnie and I are gonna be running that winter well wood stove through the new ice shacks, I picked up a couple of these off Amazon. They were pretty cheap, but these are Velcro. And I think you're gonna to have to sew one form of the Velcro in first and then stick it to the tent. That's where you're gonna run your stove pipe out of your tent, out of one of these. And it has like, these ones have a flap for a rain guard or a snow guard. So when you're not using it, it's got a flap that'll actually close and you don't have just an open hole there. So I picked up two of those because I might be running it on at least two of my shacks this year. Ice cleats, these are the stable ice cleats. Uh, these are the ones I like. I actually wore out a pair of these after like, geez, probably eight years or so. So I'm pretty, like if I use something for eight years really hard like I do, and they've held up that long and done me well, I have no problem buying another pair of them even after I've worn them out. These ones are like a little bit better, newer design than the original ones. I don't know what else to call them, but it's like having a slide or a flip-flop with metal screws that are sharpened in the bottom of them, as you can see, and they just go over your boot. So a lot of times I'll put them on my boot before I even put my boot on my feet. But I hit my head really bad a couple years back on some slick ice, so I've been pretty, Pretty strong proponent of wearing ice cleats whenever you're on thin ice like that. All right, another thing for the winter ice camping. Can't have enough of these things. Carbon monoxide detector alarm. So if you're running the buddy heaters or if, even if you're cooking in your shack, it's a good idea to have a detector with you. Like the cheapest thing that I'm probably the most excited about was this little $4 bait, <laughs> cool bait uh, can that my buddy Sean gave me from Jack Traps. It's a styrofoam bait bucket that fits inside of an old coffee can so that's what it looks like right there that's like the old timers used in Maine so I'm pretty pumped to have that I don't know how long the lid's gonna last you know being styrofoam but those are good for like running from trap to trap bring like one or two with you if you don't want to bring your big bait bucket with you but little things like that still get me going at this age and in ice fishing even with all this stuff I just love cool stuff like that that makes your day better in ice fishing and then I picked up another hose for my buddy heater uh, this could be for my smaller buddy heater this could be for the big buddy heater and this could actually even be for my cook stove if the valve is the same size. One thing that I plan on using, I don't know if I'm going to use or not, are these ice saws. I picked up one 
I picked up the Nils and then a buddy of mine gave me one that the Amish make too. And this is for sight fishing. They use them other places for spearing. We're not allowed to spear in Maine. But this one's the Nils Ice Saw. It is crazy sharp. It doesn't look like it's going to cut that well because of how big the teeth are. But I'm sure that thing's going to rip. And then the other one that I got is an Amish made one like that. And it feels a little bit more rugged even. Different, a little bit different angle on those teeth. So I'll put both those to use, see which one I like better and let you know. One of the coolest, one of the coolest new products for ice fishing has been clothing, to be honest with you. It just makes it so much more comfortable and more enjoyable than it used to be. Like growing up, we had, if we were lucky, we had a pair of car hearts that would get wet, wick their way up the whole time. But now they make these bibs that are unbelievable. And I picked these up off of the Black Friday sale from Eskimo. These are the Eskimo Flag Chaser pants. So they're actually not a bib and they're fairly lightweight. So I think it's gonna be good on a lot of days where you just don't wanna wear a bib. So it's a pair of pants, but they do have a pair of suspenders built into them. So pretty pumped about those. In Maine, our weather is crazy different. You could need something that keeps you warm in 40 below zero, or you could be fishing in 20 to 30 degrees above zero. So I also picked up a handful of Eskimo bibs and jackets for different temperatures of fishing to stay comfortable and warm. All right, couple, couple more big ticket items. This right here, like I said, Donnie's gonna be fishing with me a lot this winter and going on these camping trips with me. So my 450i is a little bit small for that, for my comfort level for both of us with all the ice fishing stuff, the filming stuff and the equipment, even though the two of us could camp out of it. I want to go big, you know, in case we have a third person. I know I'm gonna have a couple special guests uh, camping with me this winter too. So I went with the biggest one that Eskimo makes. This is the 850 XD. It's like putting two 450i's together and added a little bit more uh, insulated, full door. I've tested it out, not on the ice yet because it doesn't really matter. I've tested the 650 XD, the 450 XD, and a couple other ones. So it's going to be quality. I know that as I've never had a problem with Eskimo at all ever in the past. And I put mine through some serious abuse. So I tested this one out at the show in Minnesota and I've checked it out in a couple stores and it is a beast. It's huge. It's like seven foot wide by 15 foot long. So we're going to put a wood stove in it, uh, two or three cots in it, have all our fishing stuff in it and our cooking stuff. And it's going to make one heck of an awesome winter camping shack. It's not something I'm probably going to bring on a lot of trips. That's why I have the 450i that are just day trips or just running around trips. But anytime I'm going to be set up camping for several days or weeks, um, I'm definitely going to have this thing. So I'm excited to have that. Like I said, I've been on really well with Eskimo. So that being said, one of the bigger ticket items this year is this one right here is the Escape 2800. I was blown away by the size it had in there. And like I said, they're all quality construction with the Eskimo stuff, but giant room for a flip over, pop over shack, plenty of room to video. I might set this one up for a couple days on a lake as like a base camp and then take the 2800. I'll definitely be using for hole hopping, for fishing and for jumping around, but I could also camp out of this on a different lake nearby if I wanna run like 30, 40 mile snowmobile ride to another lake and fish and stay there. So it's gonna be awesome to have that. Uh, I'll definitely be using two this year. I'll be using either the 450i when I'm alone. So regardless of what I'm doing, whether I'm camping out of this or the 450, I can still camp out of the 2800, but I plan on doing a lot of fishing out of it. And it gives me a better experience on the ice. It definitely gives you a better experience as a viewer with less wind and less elements hitting me while I'm videoing or hitting the cameras. Really pumped to have that. I'll pull that in tandem behind my otter large sled. And that one, I don't have the equipment right here now but i'll show i'll give you guys a look at that we ended up putting new runners those high facts or blue runners on that thing i wore them out after i think two years of really hard use on going across gravel going across roads and a lot of use on the ice as i actually wore those high facts runners off at the end of last year so to protect my original investment of that large sled i put new blue runners on for this year and it was a super pain in the neck putting those on those are not fun do it with two people do it inside if you can and you know, it's just, it's just one of those jobs that takes a little while. And another thing I got for that otter sled are some replacement pins. I noticed uh, one of them mine got a little bit bent and was hard to get out. So rather than go with one that's not perfect, I decided to pick up a new set of these and I'll keep the other ones as backups in case one breaks when I'm fishing or on the trail somewhere. Cause one of these breaks, it kind of makes your trip pretty hard if you're pulling a lot of weight in your tow sled with your snowmobile like I do.
We'll just go over a couple of the smaller items. Here is a couple coffee mugs from Willie C's Bait and Tackle that they graciously gave me while I was down there. That one's going to be awesome, like travel mug. I do like having a porcelain mug inside while I'm camping, so a couple of those. Thank you for the people at Willie C's. I picked up a tiny little 25 pound digital scale for ice fishing. Fits in your pocket. No excuse to big eye your fish if you have a scale. So don't big eye your fish, just weigh it. Uh, picked up this little tiny $5 uh, rod holder that folds up and it's pretty cool because you could adjust it and set your rod in it however you want when you're in your 2800 escape or in your shack or whatever, or when you're jigging. Um, this is a tool made for putting rubber bands over those rods that don't have rod seats that you keep together with those rubber bands right there. So when you get into the higher end rods that are super sensitive, uh, a lot of times the reels held on either by electrical tape or rubber bands. I like to try to use the rubber bands. I uh, picked up some more stable icers. These are the ones that screw into the bottom of those cleats for my old set, but I'll have them for the new set if, if any fall out. Oh, another thing I picked up that looks kind of cool. I haven't put them in anything yet, but I have a pair of boots that are only going to be used for ice fishing are these little studs, Woody's Twist Grip It, and they go into your boot and just stay in your boot, and they're little carbide studs that should keep you from falling on the ice. And for tackle, I got a ton of new tackle this year. I'll give you a little sampling of it right here. These are some lake trout baits right through here. Hyper Hammer, Hyper Rattle, Hyper Glide. Some little Cleos always work, Vibratos. I like to change out hooks on a lot of baits, extra treble hooks in case one bends out. I have to cut one if it gets in your clothes or to get the right size on a lure. I'm gonna try these out because they're glow. I don't know if they work or not, but these are the V-Rods by Acme right here. Love that bait for lake trout. Love it for just about everything in the ice or vertical jigging and a bunch of different sizes in the colors that I like right there. Um, that's kind of like my cast master box right there. It's got some Stubbsies, cast masters, micro cast masters, and I have a whole bunch more. And then I picked up this box, this foam box out in Minnesota. Uh, I think it's called like Fish More. And you could poke your tungsten jig heads in that row right there so they're not bouncing around or losing the paint. And then you could put your other baits in here. I don't know exactly what that one's made for. And then I picked up another little Plano 3400. Those fit pretty well in those Eskimo rod um, rod holders too. So I'll show you guys the Escape 2800 and the shape it's in right now. Just out of the box. It looks just like this right here. So I still have to put that together. Donnie's going to come over in a little bit. And the first thing that you always want to do on something like that is put the slides on. I'll show you those. These are the 70 inch sled tracking kit. This is what's going to protect that investment forever. And rather than wear out the bottom of your sled and have a hole in it, you can wear these out. Um, hopefully they last a long time. It'll beat wearing out the whole unit, but that's the 70 inch sled tracking kit, which is made for the 2800 escape. So Donnie and I are going to put those on. That's got the whole kit in it. And then along with that 2800, I got the travel cover, the deluxe travel cover for that, which is pretty awesome just to flip over. It's going to protect it. It's going to keep it free from the elements. And then you, another thing that you need is a hitch for it. So I have the, I got the Easy Stow pivoting tow hitch. I like the pivoting one so that way you can flip it over and it fits in the trailer a lot easier. This one you could actually hook on a ball or to a regular pin hitch. So I think that's just about it for this year. So not too much stuff for this year. I uh, did make a couple improvements to my snowmobile. I'll shoot that in a later video. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to hear about, what you think's the best buy out of all this stuff, what you think I'm not going to like, what you think I'm going to like. And if you want to see a product review video on last year's 2022-23 new product for ice fishing. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Really appreciate all the support as always. And hope to see you out on the water someday. Hopefully all this stuff works as good for me as I'm hoping it does or expect it to.